Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm super, super excited. We have Liz, the TikTok queen, back with us today. And I believe she's now on her fourth, is it your fourth TikTok account? Her yeah. fourth TikTok account because, you know, it is what it is. Everybody <laughs> watching knows why. So I am going to be placing her new link again down in the description box below. If you are on TikTok, please make sure to show her some support and give her a follow. Now, before we get into the episode, I do want to say that when we initially decided to do this t-shirt drawing, we were going to do it in a live episode. However, because of unforeseen issues with this platform that we're all dealing with Liz is dealing with it on her own platform we are not going to be able to do this live so we're doing the drawing in a pre-recorded video I apologize I know a lot of you wanted to do it live because you get to interact but this is something that the plat an issue with the platform not with myself as the content creator or owner of this channel so again when they throw us these dodgeballs we just got to move and go with the flow and we are going to be doing the drawing pre-recorded i have the bowl here but we're going to save that till the end of the episode to draw some names but first i wanted to before we even get to it let me see here i'm going to actually pull up your shop here on uh the screen let's Very see cool. here so if you have not been to Liz's shop yet, this is her awesome, awesome store. And Christmas is coming up. I know people are probably going to make comments about the fact that we're promoting Christmas because we know that that's not what we've been told it is. But in my opinion, energy doesn't just leave. We have to transfer it. So for those of us, I love Christmas personally. We're not doing anything nefarious during this holiday season. We're just loving our friends and family and, ex and sharing gifts and all that kind of stuff. So I think that that's perfectly fine. And Christmas is coming up. So if you, especially if you have that person in your life, that's like hard to buy for, if they're a truther, especially if they're hard to buy for, here you go. You've got this awesome, awesome, awesome little shop that Liz has created um, this is the t-shirt that I have on this morning and the one that Liz also has on this morning. And so I wanted to ask Liz some questions this morning about her t-shirts before we do the drawing. There's her beautiful, beautiful co-star, Liz. Yes. <laughs> and Where's... you have kids clothes too, right? Aren't you designing now kids clothes? Yeah. Yeah. I have, um, right now I just have, um, sweatshirts for basically toddlers. Um, but yeah, Levi's got a few of them. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm going to show the other page here. Look at, I mean, y'all, I love all these. I love, and where Liz and I live in the South. It, I mean, I have a heavy winter jacket, but it's never, sometimes it doesn't get cold enough to wear the heavy winter jacket. So if you're in the, yeah. south, in the South, you know how important sweatshirts are because they become kind of like your winter jacket. This is my favorite right here. This born one. This is so beautiful. So yeah, it's um, definitely my favorite too. It's super soft, super, super soft and you know, kind of lightweight, but still warm. So, right, right. The heavy, I have like these two sweatshirts that I typically wear in the winter and one is like, super heavy, but the other isn't. And my mother always gets mad at me because I'm always wearing the one that isn't super heavy because it, it's like perfect. You know, it's like right. Right, down here in the South, especially for us down here in the South, you know? Yeah. So Now the beautiful thing about these, um, these, oh, where did it go? Here we go. These, um, these, these t-shirts is that they're kind of like subtly giving messages, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you know Charlie Ward, then you understand these two shirts. But let's, I mean, let's talk about some of these. Let's talk about, where is it? This. So I have this one too, Seven and Two Infinity. Can you explain that one to our, our audience? Yeah, so that one's basically, I mean, it can be whatever really you want it to be. But um, when I made it, I was thinking about what the seven spirits of God. So they're all represented by the colors of the rainbow. Um, so essentially they're kind of like, I mean, there's so, so many different terminologies that people use. Um, uh, like I feel like in the new age kind of era, um, you know, people call them like guides or whatever. I call them the seven spirits of God. Um, so I feel like seven into eternity is like, they are taking you on your journey into eternity kind of thing. Like they're always with you. Type of deal. So beautiful. So. Because we are yeah. eternal beings. We are. Right. That's one thing. That's the big, that's one of the big lies, right? That we're, we've been taught to fear our own mortality, but 
our, we really don't have mortality. Yeah. You know, like we, that's kind of the big, the big joke. And I want to show you two guys. It comes in multiple colors. So she's got white and she's got yellow here. And when you, when you make the order, you just select your color and the size. Now I wear a small, so I've got a small on right here. Um, and I am, I'm about, uh, 115 pounds, like five, three, five, four. So that's kind of where I am. I don't I haven't weighed myself since I was 27. So, and I'm 38 now, but according to my driver's license, that's about my weight. So I wear about a size two and pants two or four. So, um, so that's kind of where I am with my sizing. So, and you have all the options down here. And I actually really like that they're like men's. I prefer men's shirts to the female cut. The female cut always like makes me feel a little bit more claustrophobic because of, you know, the chest area. <laughs> you still there? So, you know, I think you froze there. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. Oh, yeah. I was saying I like the men's sizes better than the female size. Like, because I mean, women's yeah. shoes always like cut me weird. Like, and I, I know a lot of women feel that way. They would rather have the men's t shirt sizes because it's a little bit more roomy. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So let's, Let's and also everybody knows the butterfly effect. Like that's something we yeah. are all it's such a beautiful and crazy philosophy. And it's so true to think that one butterfly flap over in India can cause an effect here in America. And it's like how all of your actions are such a domino type effect. Um, yeah. Let's talk about this one. What is seated? Um, so that was in uh, basically it comes from this teacher that I feel like I've talked about him before. Um, he talks a lot about how essentially we are, you know, made to be Kings. Um, like we're essentially royalty cause we're God's DNA. Um, so he talks about sitting on your throne, being seated and essentially like being seated in peace and being seated, um, like place basically in your seat of government. Um, so that, you know, whatever happens, it's in, like you're ruling over it. You're not underneath it. You're ruling over it, if that makes sense. It's like a, a reclaiming of sovereignty. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So you guys see how awesome these shirts are? Like when you've been on this journey, like Liz and I have been on and all of you guys watching have been on for a few years now and you understand these subtle meanings and the beauty yeah. behind them and you wear these shirts and it can start a conversation with people in a very, you know, in a very positive way. Like sometimes in this community, things can be a little bit scary because we know the truth, but we also mm -hmm. know that we're coming out of the darkness. And the, the thing that we have to focus on now is moving into that light and, and all the justice that's being served. And we are sovereign beings. They don't want us to know that, but, but we are, we yeah. are sovereign beings. Now let's talk about, let's see one of my favorite ones. Where is it? Did I scroll past it? let's see here it is let's talk about this one oh. <laughs> um basically so that's stands for yod he vav he so that's essentially <laughs> jesus's real name yeah, <laughs> or yeah. the, basically the um the english translation of the hebrew letters <laughs> that's um, beautiful so it's yahweh pretty much or you know, people yeah. also say like yeah people pronounce it differently. I always say yeah. Yeshua, but yeah. I've heard people say Yahua and you know, who knows what it really is, but those are the English translation of the Hebrew letters basically. Yeah. You know, the letter, um, when Jesus was alive and I know, and he spoke Aramaic and he, and there was Hebrew, there's no J sound. So even like John yeah. and James and Judah, that did not exist, that J sound. And I do know that there's a lot of interesting information that I am learning on my journey about the name Jesus, that that was the name that was assigned to this entity yeah. by the, um, the dark side. Yep. <laughs> We're learning a lot about what they tried to do. They tried to manipulate his story um, with the, you know, the 12 apostles and the one Jesus makes 13. That's a coven. Uh, Ra, Horus, all these other God has 12 disciples around them. And then we look at the missing books of the Bible. There were way more than 12. And so we mm -hmm. start to see what they did to edit the Bible, because yes, the Bible was very much edited, um, take out the stuff that was too potent that they didn't want us to know, to yeah. use our energy when we were told this information over and over and over and over again about this being 
um, we were using that, they were using, harnessing that energy from us then to create their own spells or whatever you want to call it. But yeah. that shows the beauty of how powerful Jesus actually is, or the real, you know, when I say it, we say it, we're, we're referring to the positive, the Yeshua, mm -hmm. that despite all of that, the truth is still coming out. Yeah. And the truth is so much mightier than what we were told. Jesus is so much mightier than what we were told. God is mightier than what we were told. So this to me is one of the most beautiful t-shirts that you have. It's just simply the name, the initials of the yes. name. And that's, and, and that's gorgeous. I also put it going downwards, um, kind of basically to symbol like going down your spine as in like the building blocks of your DNA. <laughs> um, yeah. And, yeah. and it, it kind of also represents, in a way, the, like, chakra energy oh, yeah. zones. Because each, oh, yeah. I mean, there's, oh, yeah. on that section of your body, yeah. there's, you know, that four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Four. four. In, uh, <laughs> um, in so. yoga, we talk about uh, Shashumna. So Shashumna is a line of energy that runs down your spine. Yeah. And it's one of the main nadis. There's, like, 75,000 nadis in the human body that are, like, sparks of energy that are like mm -hmm. little creeks if you think about a creek of energy yeah. running through your body and the, the main one which would be like the river where they all flow into is shishuna that is in the spine and that is why like in a lot of eastern physical practices like yoga you know tai chi they focus on the health of the spine the physical health of the spine so that it's mm -hmm. strong enough to be able to pull that energy up into yeah. the conscious understanding and so that is gorgeous and for those that are having a you know, for those that are coming from more of a fundamentalist background where you've been told that this stuff is like sinful or whatever, it's in the Bible. Jacob's ladder. That's Jacob's yeah. ladder. Israel. They talk about this in the Bible. This is not something that's like new agey and like not of God. It's literally in the Bible too. And uh, I believe they refer to it in the Hebrew as the, the Akita, which is kind of like the all spark. And yeah. when you're in the womb, the first thing that's formed is your heart because that's the original seed. And then from that grows the spine, which is like the building blocks of who you are. So exactly. it all kind of correlates. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know I just, I've been saying that too. And I know I've said this in like every show because it was just so like mind blowing to me when I was, you know, really looking into a lot of these started studying a lot of I'm still studying these missing texts when I started mm -hmm. I would listen to a lot of different lectures from different types of professors some associated with what we call consider you know controlled colleges and some that are more independent so I just wanted to hear all the different perspectives yeah. and something somebody said that that understands Hebrew really well they said you know in, in Genesis 1 3 God said let there be light and mm -hmm. as an English speaker to me growing up that was like oh he created light so we could see but for yeah. a hebrew speaker back in those days they would have understood that word light differently that light right. meant divine spark god yes. said let there be a divine spark and that's what's mm -hmm. inside of you as well in the next verse genesis 1 4 goes to say that he saw the light and the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness yes. now if you read further the way that genesis has been edited by the bad guys it really yeah. does lead you to believe he's creating night and day. But in those two verses, the original readers would have understood that he was creating divine spark and separating his children, us, from the darkness, from right. the other side. And so, yeah. absolutely, it's all, it's, it's so, it's also internal. I mean, Jesus even said that, behold, the kingdom of heaven lies inside of you. If the right. kingdom of heaven lies inside of you, then also the kingdom of hell will, will reside inside of you as well. And so right. that is you. No one can do that for you. You have to find that yourself. Um, yeah. I, I think this is just gorgeous too. This one right here with the two, the higher self. Yeah. Do, uh, I like, uh, it's kind of also, you know, like our friend negative 48 talks about like mirror in a sense, you know, like the man in the mirror basically. <laughs> yeah. Which was what our, our, uh, another great fighter on this side of, uh, the movie, um, who everybody <laughs> thinks has left the earth plane, but we know has not. Yep. Michael Jackson. I've always felt such a connection to him. Like he was my absolute favorite. I remember singing, I got a karaoke machine when I was like five for Christmas and the track that was on it, like preloaded into it was um, Billie Jean. <laughs> so I like, knew all of the words to Billie Jean as a five-year-old <laughs> and I would just sing it all the time. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, the man in the mirror was, 
I mean, that's literally what we're, where I'm talking about the man in the mirror. If I want to change the world, I got to change myself. Right. And also, that, that kind of leads us to this shirt. I oh, love yeah. this awaken with everybody together collectively. Yeah. So it's kind of also like, you know, almost like the road less traveled in a way. Um, Cause you've got the one standing up against the crowd. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of, I really, you know, I have all these like, very typical like things that we talk about all this time in my head and i'm just like i don't want to be that blunt about it i want people to ask what that is and actually be able to start a conversation with them right uh because it's you know it's easy to put like things that mr t says <laughs> on a shirt and so right. like, i could easily do that <laughs> but i kind of wanted to be a little more creative with things mm -hmm. and you know get people to ask questions um, that one is, uh, so along with Hebrew thinking, um, even when like you're first born, they talk about how, um, what, <laughs> even when you're first born, they talk about how you, um, the first scream, like when you take your first breath, it's basically, yeah, like you, yeah. <gasps> and then when you scream out, it's way. So you're basically starting off your life with that. So the first inhale is the breathing, <sighs> in, the essence of him or the essence of the divine. And then you're exhaling it. And then you continue to do that your entire life. Beautiful. Uh, and it's so. also, that's the one thing they've tried to take away from us, isn't it? Yeah. Was Our first attack <laughs> was. Yep. Exactly. God breathed life into man and man stood up. There's also just plenty of benefits. I don't know if you know who Wim Hof is. Uh -huh. uh, there's, you know, he's a great example of the benefits of just breathing. <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know, and controlling your breathing, controlling your nervous system through your breathing. You know. Yeah. Well, that's part of yoga as well. Um, the breath is connected to the nervous system. And um, we're recording this, guys, on Wednesday. But this is going to be airing on Thursday. So by the time this airs, I would have the video on yoga I released on Wednesday would have already aired. And we have a, an aspect of yoga that's called pranayama and that's breathing work. And prana is your life force. Um, yeah. Yama is extending the life force. So it's extending your life's capacity through the breath. And mm -hmm. again, that breathing of life is, is what God, when God breathes into you, that's when you stand up. That's when you become alive. And right. um, the breath is connected. And I tell my, we tell our students all the time, you know, when you're faced with like challenging yoga postures that bring up a lot of fear, the first sign that there is fear is people hold their breath. They, they yeah. start, and that's, that's usually a sign of anxiety that's coming. And so that's how we work with students to relax their nervous system through facing these challenging postures, but then allowing the breath to still come at the same time and what that yeah. does with the body. And so yeah. it's just, it's, it's, and it's, it's interesting to me because all these ancient, ancient, ancient religions and faiths focus on breathing, including the Hebrew text, including Christian text. Like they talk a lot about this. And I love this lotus flower. Of course, this is a huge symbol of yoga as well. We eat oh, yeah. um, And that for us with the lotus flower, the lotus flower usually grows on top of like mud and muck. And so mm -hmm. in order for it to bloom, then it has to kind of go through that in order yeah. to then come out. And so that's what we have to, as human beings, sometimes we have to go through, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like we have to go through that in order to bloom. Um, right. Is that your perception of this shirt or do you have a different perception here? Um, pretty much. I mean, what, Bubba? it also just kind of is like, um, uh, you know, like, <laughs> leveling up you could say from glory to glory you could say you know evolving um and i've heard i i mean recently i've been really into like learning about the whole like chakra system and stuff and you basically have to start from the root and work yeah. up um and it almost Lazara, yeah smaller um i feel like the greater you become <laughs> within yourself the essentially the less you become it's like lower like lower still like um you know the greatest essentially in the kingdom of god is always the servant of all um yeah. so um essentially less in a way like your ego whatever you want to call it becomes less um and you become lighter 
Anyway. Absolutely. It's so interesting. And again, guys, I'm going to link down below the video I released yesterday, if you missed it on yoga, because I talk a lot about this with the yoga philosophy. Um, mm -hmm. The ego is, is your own worst enemy. And mm -hmm. the ego is a false perception of yourself. And that's part of yoga is, is, you know, the whole basic yoga philosophy is, is you using yeah. this practice to connect yourself back to God, because yes. we separate ourselves from God, because who we think we are as a human being is not who we are in relationship to God. And we have to go through these like ego deaths, as we call them in, in, in yoga, where you have to kind of actually mourn the fact that you're not who you thought you were and that your identity as as a human being is actually not it at all compared to your identity in, in eternity and what your right. soul and your spirit actually is. And so you start to shed that ego. And when the ego sheds, you do become a more loving person, a more humble person, a less judgmental person, a more understanding person, a more compassionate person, like all these super valuable qualities of a human existence start to radiate through you because you're not then then attached to your own ego, which then comes to, again, ego also comes back to that fear of mortality, which is an mm -hmm. illusion anyway. And yeah. um, absolutely. And also the, the lotus flower, like every petal of the lotus flower represents a different journey and a different story within yourself. You have multiple stories within your own life and multiple lives within your own life, you know? So um, I love that so, so, so much guys. All right, let's look at, let's find another one. There was one I had my, uh, I have this one as well, hanging in my closet right now. I am endlessly creating my reality. Talk about that for the coming oh, right. of the new thousand years of peace. Yeah. So, I mean, it really is. That's part of like, I feel like gaining back our power is what you believe and what you think, like the sum of your thoughts is who you are. So essentially, if you can control what you think about and actually be conscious of what you're thinking, what you're fearing, what you're, you know, talking about, um, you essentially are consciously creating your reality because some of us do not realize that we are creating the reality we're living in without even knowing it. Um, because we're that powerful. Um, and that's why kind of it ties into the butterfly effect. Um, you know, every single action that you take is, you know, affects someone else, somewhere else. Um, so collectively, if we we're all conscious of actually that, then I think we would actually move into things a lot faster. Right. Uh, right. I feel like, you know, when I was thinking about that, I was very much like, you know, I, it was kind of in the time where people started to really just not believe in a lot of the truth or stuff or just get really frustrated with it because things were happening as quickly as we wanted it to. It's like, I mean, yeah, we're told we're watching a movie, but it's not going to be over as fast as a movie is over. Um, right. Yeah. Real life is real life we're talking yeah, about it is real life it is i know that's what we keep la i was laughing on um monday i was on a paris rising africa and uh shanti and morning and i were laughing that like you know we were told from the military back channel that to enjoy the show but we realized that we are the show right we exactly have to take action and um you know i talked about with cindy before this idea of shakti and shiva and shakti is the action of shiva shiva can't shiva is just pure existence but shakti is what takes that action and moves that action forward so we right. are shakti in the existence of, of we are the action of that divine consciousness and absolutely again going back to the yoga episode that's the whole concept too the second sutra of the first pada of the yoga sutras is yoga chitta vritti nirodaha and yoga that means yoga is basically you controlling your own mind yep. it's not your mind controlling you but you are controlling your own mind and when you get deep into like a profound spiritual practice, not just yoga, yoga is just one of the tools that can bring you to that realization. There are multiple tools to bring you to that realization. But once you make that realization, you have that awareness like, oh, crap, I'm doing this to myself. Mm -hmm. Then action can start to change for you. And it, it's not an overnight. But we talked about this on the Sacred Blue Ten as well on uh, with Shanti on Monday night. It's not something that happens overnight. But awareness is the first step. Being aware that you are doing this to yourself 
and that right. you are you are your that's that's what that's uh in the yoga sutras of patanjali and that's what he's telling you he's like listen i'm paraphrasing because this this script this uh the yoga sutra is here's the copy was was written like <laughs> five thousand years ago so this is not how they spoke five thousand years modern lingo he's like listen boo yeah. <laughs> you're in the process you're to yourself. <laughs> no one's hurting you you're right. doing it to yourself and if you want to fix this nobody nothing outside of you can fix this this is about right. you humbly coming on your knees and going within which is everything that jesus taught that's another mm -hmm. huge issue i have with the church and the way the church manipulates this they make it seem like to x access jesus's love and, and it's an external thing right but it's not it's an internal thing it's yep. an internal access and they hate that the narcissistic psychopaths that you know have been in charge of these organizations including the church for years hate that because they want to control that and when they if, and if you know that you have that power within yourself to con to be with jesus to be with god to feel that light then they have no power over you anymore right. and what is it the military back channel said you waking up is mm -hmm. their greatest fear you think yeah. this out is their greatest fear. Why do you think that the church, the deep church, because we know now, I'm sorry to break it to you, but if you're on this journey, I'm not saying that this is not saying that God is corrupt. God is not corrupt at all. God is beautiful and a, a holy, merciful grace and light, but the church is corrupt and it has been for a very, very long time. The church is not a Christian organization. It is, it is manipulating the teaching for their own benefit and glory and, and their own ABUSC. So as we move forward, <laughs> we start to understand that that's, and that's why I get backlash a lot from people who are still brainwashed by mm -hmm. the deep church. I'm sure you get backlash sometimes too. We all do. And it's crazy. Cause like these people understand that our government's corrupt, our schools are corrupt, but they can't quite understand if something like, if something is as big that the whole world knows about it, then it's corrupt, like, mm. like, like the church, you know, and that doesn't, again, and this is for me as someone of faith, this is something that's freeing for me to understand yeah. this, that I don't have to be beholden to an organization, right? I can just go straight right. to God. All of a sudden, yeah. the scripture is more powerful, makes more sense. And with right. in discovering all these truths makes God's love so much bigger, in my opinion. Right. It's, it's so much better than what they told us it was. You know, yeah. it's not that scary. What do you think about that? Well, it's just, it makes it also, it's so much easier. <laughs> like, I feel like we overcomplicate things so much, especially when it comes to God um, and who we are and everything, just because we've had so much information and so much misinformation. And I mean, I mean, you just think about it, like the way our world is set up right now, everything is there to distract us and you know, make us always look outside of us. I mean, look at TV and mm -hmm. our phones and, you know, everything else. It's all put there just so that we don't ever spend time with our own thoughts. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, there's music in the car. There's, you know, as soon as you get home, you turn on the TV. You know, you're always having these outside sources distracting you in some way. Um uh, you know, whether it's, you know, you have to go to work, you have to pay bills. Like there's always an distraction. This is intentional. I found that, yeah, does that exactly. intentionally. Yeah. yeah. And I just feel like the more you realize that, oh Lord. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Well, there you go. Well, you have a picture of you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Someone called me. Yeah. Uh, um, but I feel like the more you realize that, the more you start kind of going against the system in a way. I remember once I started to really want to do inner work and everything, I stopped listening to music. Yeah. I stopped yeah. watching TV. The only thing I would listen to were teachers that like knew more and were spiritually higher, I guess, in a, in a higher place that I wanted to be, I would just listen to that and just get it into my subconscious. Yeah. Even if I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> um, right. Right. And uh, I knew that it, and I can tell like, this was, you know, at least like four or five years ago. And I can tell that the things that they taught about <laughs> and that I would just barely listen to in my headphones when I would go grocery shopping or something like that, or even in the car are like 
coming up now. And I would go back and I'm like, I think I heard that from him, but now I'm kind of like discovering it on my own. <laughs> like, yeah. because he got in there somehow <laughs> and got yeah. in my subconscious. That happens in yoga too. Like I'll, I'll sit and, you know, for years and years and years, I'll sit through conferences, listening to like my teacher in India speak or a more, uh, you know, a teacher who's been doing this longer than me speak and they'll say things. And then like, Five years later, I'll be in the middle. Of, it'll be in the middle of my practice, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's what they meant." Yeah, you know. And so those seeds get planted within your subconscious, and even if it doesn't make sense now, it always comes back later. And I and think that's essentially what I wanted to do with my T-shirt line is I'm always, and I've always been that type of person. Is I've always been the seed planter. Like I remember feeling so bad about myself because I wasn't the person that would like lead people to Jesus when I was younger. <laughs> like I wouldn't like save people. You know? yeah. And now I see that it is just as important, um, yeah. you know, if not one of the most important parts of it is planting that seed. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do with my t-shirt sweatshirt line is have stuff that really meant something that planted a seed in someone's head. Well, that's um, literally all you can do. Cause I know what you're talking about growing up in the South. Like you have to go and like, you know, evangelize, evangelize. <laughs> you have no, okay. If, if you're a fundamentalist Christian listening to this right now, you have no control over somebody else's soul. That's not right. your responsibility. And if you do, that's witchcraft. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which is what the church is trying to get us to do because the 12 right. apostles of Jesus make a coven. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. You, yeah. that is somebody else's soul is not your responsibility. It's their responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now all you can do is just teach what you know and live a good life. Lead by right. example. example. Yeah. They have to, you cannot go and say, I'm going to show this person Jesus that I'm going to, that, that's so narcissistic that right. and not, it's psychopathic to think that you have some sort of sway over somebody else's soul. That's right. so... Every yeah. season, and my boyfriend says it all the time because he's like one of the most experienced uh, teachers down here in the Southeast. And he says that all the time as a teacher, like, and I get this as a teacher, I don't teach as much anymore as he does now because I do this most of the time now that people will come to him and be like wanting him to tell them what to do in certain situations or wanting him to like, as their teacher, like remove the obstacle for them. And that's not the teacher's job. Yeah. No, That's it's not a teach a lesson. So let yeah. you go through the crap. So you figure it out yourself. <laughs> exactly. My Todd's job, the teacher's job is to give you the tools to help you understand like how to navigate mm -hmm. in a healthier way or give you things to reflect as you're going through the storm, but they can't do it for you. You right. have to go through it. You know, it's yeah. like when you have the light of God inside of you, it's, it's, um, you know, the law of one talks about this. When you carry that light of God inside of you and your high vibration, you will get more and more and more attacked yeah. because you stand out. And that's, that just is how it is. And yeah. so it's not like that, that accepting God or Jesus, is like a magic pill that just makes everything go away because every soul has their own journey. And you as a human being are not responsible for everybody else's souls. I feel like it also, it's not so I, it's not to me so much of getting attacked. It's that <laughs> basically when you essentially let that light inside of you, there's no room for the darkness. Yeah. So it comes out to the surface and you attract what you are until you deal with it. Exactly. Because I can't tell you how little I deal with spiritual warfare now. Like it's not even a thought. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's because I've, um, gone through years of doing inner work to healing and getting rid of that essentially dark DNA that uh -huh. is generational. Um, <clears throat> Cause like, honestly, I don't even think about spiritual warfare anymore. Like if anything happens, it's a result of me not dealing with some crap inside of me. <laughs> like, that's well, what that's it, it too. That's what, that's um, what these triggers are meant to like show you as everything is about as a learning journey. I said last night I was on beyond mystic. Well, for those watching, couple nights ago, but we're filming yeah. so long. Um, that, um, that, um, you know, we're not, we didn't come here to watch keeping up with the Kardashians and drink milk. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is a school. We're here to learn and to grow right. closer to God. And, and there's no, when you go closer to God, there's no finish line. You're no. always working. You're always yeah. evolving, you know? And, and, and 
I really, I mean, we've talked about this a lot because we both come from the South. And so we're around very fundamentalist people and, you know, the dangerous type of belief system, like where it gets real dangerous when it comes to almost like C-U-L-T like, and I know we have both expressed that we have a lot of, um, concern over those people when yeah. the truth actually happens and when the shift yeah. happens um yeah. because as the sweatshirt has faced, <laughs> even churches are part of the matrix aren't they yeah They're i mean anything that, that like you have to look outside of yourself that's a part of the matrix because that's creating the outside physicality world exactly. and it's not like we're all meant to be so inwardly connected that we are connected to everyone else. Yeah. Um, not the other way around. Like, you know, you should be inwardly connected to other people in other countries that you would just automatically kind of know what's going on with them. You know, you can kind of feel it, sense it instead of getting it from the news uh, or, you know, something like that. Like um, one thing that teacher that I talked about earlier said is, all of technology is literally what we're supposed to be doing. Like, right. like you should be able to essentially communicate with someone uh, basically telepathically without calling them. You know, you should be able to <laughs> transport yourself <laughs> somewhere without flying. You know, yeah. like we should be able to do that. I mean, Jesus did those things. Right. Um, and we're supposed to do greater. So you know, if you just think of anything that technology is, that's what you're supposed, that's, that's the goal point. And even further than that, that we don't even know. <laughs> but Isn't it amazing how they tricked us into thinking we yeah. need our, our iPhones and our Zooms and or like, right. you know, they tricked yeah. us into thinking like, oh, we'll, we'll do this for you because you can't pop, you know, you're just a lowly human with 97% junk DNA. So we're going to have to do this yeah. for you. No, God doesn't right. make junk. And you know, there are human beings that have, besides Jesus, that have been able to do this. Neem Kroli Baba right. was a guru in India who there's multiple stories where he yeah. was able to make more food appear. Or there's a story with Ram Das where he was driving with Neem Kroli Baba in India and he was driving and Baba was beside him and they were chit-chatting and he looked over and he was gone, mm -hmm. he vanished. And then like a few minutes later, he was back again. And yeah. so you see that a lot with these stories from the East. And again, y'all, Jesus was from the East. I know mm -hmm. it's funny, David Zublick and I were talking about that once because he gets backlash as well when he talks about Jesus being Eastern. Yeah. You know, it, these fundamentalists sometimes get so upset when they have to face the realization that Jesus was not from France. <laughs> He's not from Spain. He was not from. He's not English. <laughs> yeah. He, he did not look, look like lizard me. You know, he, yeah. he was from the Middle East. And what so. Sorry, you got no, no, and his that his whole upbringing, everything he understood came from that. And that's why I feel like the all the Eastern philosophies kind of all say the same thing because they're coming from that root understanding you mm -hmm. know and that was that's, yeah. that's the cradle of life as well you know yeah that's Potamia area so one of my favorite tiktoks recently was <laughs> this is this young girl going name something that's or or talk about something that's in the bible or that people think is in the bible but actually isn't and then this older lady is just sitting there going white people <laughs> And it's so quick and it's so perfect. Like the comedic timing is amazing. And it's gotten like millions of views. It's hilarious. You know, there, there's a play um, and I'm a huge musical theater lover. And so there's this old play that they just revived called Anything Goes. It's got a lot of oh, yeah. tap dancing in it. So if you like that kind of showy stuff like I do, I yeah. love all that stuff, that pomp and circumstance of musical theater. But I mean, I'm paraphrasing so I don't obviously don't know the lines by heart. But in the opening, they're, they're going on a boat trip from, it's in the 1920s. They're going from New York to London or to England. They're taking this boat trip across the Atlantic Ocean. And, you know, it's 1920s. So there's like gangsters and, you know, the main, Reno Sweeney, the main woman who sings. And she's like this, used to be an evangelist, but now she's like a showgirl and she's performing mm -hmm. on the boat. Well, anyway... One of the characters in the beginning of the play is this like preacher who has two men who are from China with him on the boat that he has just converted to Christianity. And he's having this dialogue with them where he was saying, do Christians eat with silverware or with sticks? And they have to say silverware. Do Christians do <laughs> oh this or do that? <laughs> it's conditioning them to believe that Christians resemble 
Western culture. Which yeah. there's no there's nothing wrong with Western yeah. culture. I love being a Westerner, but but that's not that's not what Christianity is. Christianity right. can be in all cultures. Like if you I mean, you know, but it it it's not about looking a certain way. And when people think that they are so low vibrational at that yeah. point that they don't understand that this is about all of humanity. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, um, and my teacher in India said it best. We have this like transition we do in our practice where you're in downward facing dog and you jump through to a seated position. And so there's really two different ways people teach this. Normally when a student first starts learning it, it's like a dive bomb. It's like a dive in a crab. Mm -hmm. But the more muscle control you have, you're able to go very slowly, almost it's like a half handstand through some Teachers teach jumping through with straight legs. Some teachers teach jumping through with cross legs. And each teacher has a different reason for teaching it differently. I jump through with straight legs. Well, somebody asked my teacher in conference once, they, they're like, stretchy. you know, some teachers teach jump through cross legs. Some teachers teach jump through straight legs. Which one is correct? And mm. Shrat sat there for a minute and he goes, my Western students eat with cutlery. My Asian students eat with sticks. My Indian students eat with their hands. Mm -hmm. Which one is correct? There you go. (laughs) Yeah. It's all correct. It's how you how you live your culture has nothing to do, unless you're hurting somebody else, because that's that's not okay. But your everyday culture, seeing Jesus, seeing Jesus as a Westerner is completely robbing the story of 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 him and his life. Because he was not a Westerner. You know, I I I'm debating between doing a deep dive into Cesare Borgia. I have to be very careful though. And I might, if I do it, I probably will just put this on rumble um, because Cesare Borgia is the painting that we see, yeah. that we see. I have heard this and I'm like, <laughs> it just makes sense. I remember always looking at the typical pictures of Jesus just being like, I just don't, I don't think he looks like that. <laughs> just, he looks more like you and me than <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like i just don't i can't i can't see it honestly i like mean dirty blonde hair yeah blue like eyes. a really like greek nose like yeah. blue no. eyes yeah like yeah, yeah. panting pro v thick beautiful hair no and uh mm-hmm. well cesare borgia okay so the borgias they uh one of their i can't remember which pope it was but um that whole so there is um a showtime series about the borgia family mm-hmm. and listen listen Listen, if your <laughs> family ends up getting a series on HBO or Showtime, yeah, they probably were not the best family in the world, right? You know, because they're looking for dramatics and scandal. So Cecily yeah. Borgia was the son of this pope, um, because obviously the popes had multiple children because you know, rules mm-hmm. rules for thee, but not for me. Um right. and um Cesare apparently was a great lover of Da Vinci. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. <laughs> did his painting. And that comes back to the original Operation Blue Bean, where they were going to get an idea. They were trying to get us to get this ingrained idea of what Jesus looked like. And so when they put the hologram in the sky, we would think that it was the second coming and therefore we yeah. would be completely under their control. So right, y'all right. see how this works? You see how this works? You see how this works? <laughs> And I also tell people too, like, if you, you know, I'm not saying that every pastor, every preacher, or reverend is dirty. I'm sure there are people out there running churches who have the best of intentions. Um, But you have to look at their seminary school. Where they go to seminary school? Follow the money. Right. Follow the money. Follow the money. Follow the money and then look at the fruit of their life. (laughs) Like, they have red shoes, you know? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we, if you don't know what I mean by red shoes, I cannot tell you on this channel. No, you cannot. <laughs> go over to Bit Shooter Rumble and type that in, and you'll find many, many videos of what yeah. about what that means. But I think that's more of Catholicism anyway. But um, yeah. but yeah. So so also, I, I just feel like anyone that has that much money and like dripping in gold, and then like there's plenty of poor people around them. Mm, a little suspect there. Yeah, like what I, I, I can't stand. I can't stand Joel Olstein. I can't oh, stand yeah. him. Can't stand him. Yeah. There's a preacher yeah. here in Atlanta. That's uh, his name. I'll just say his name because it's my opinion. So whatever, come at me. It's my opinion. And <laughs> Stanley, he's a big preacher yeah. in Atlanta. I can't stand him. There's something yeah. about him that has always rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm not saying anything. I don't know that I've heard some things, but I don't have any concrete proof. But trust yeah, me, I've God. never, I've never been a huge fan of mega churches in general. I just feel like people 
go to them, honestly, just because they don't want to have any real accountability. But no yeah. offense to you if you go to a mega church, but <laughs> that's just my you know <laughs> thought process. Look at how how many of these churches are now requiring paperwork, and you guys know what I mean by paperwork oh to come yeah. to the service. That makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely. Right. Then Jesus, Jesus hang out with leopards. Like that right. was actually contagious. <laughs> like, r- like what? Yeah. This is, and, and they're, you know, what is it? Um, They were like, oh, you know, Jesus would want you to. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry, but what? He could heal yeah, people no. with his hands. Right. That's, well, I mean, that's wakey, but he could, you know, he could heal people with his hands. So right. anyway, but hello, precious boy. Say hi. Can you say hello. hi? Hello. 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 <laughs> you like the sweatshirt? You see okay. your mama's sweatshirt on the screen? <laughs> That's your mama's sweatshirt. It's got it in gray and in white. Look at that. I like the gray one. That gray one's pretty snazzy. Yeah. Anyway. I'm getting black yes. just because, yes. you know. Toddlers and food. <laughs> well, yeah, I wear a lot of black too. I mean, actually, I so I so guys, so I have three of I actually have four of Liz's shirts. One's in the dirty clothes hamper. Um <laughs> I have this one on and I have the Escape the Matrix. But y'all, so when we decided to do this, to this giveaway, one of the shirts I ordered, I kept in the packaging because I wanted to show you guys how cool oh. these shirts <laughs> are when they come to you. So I've been and it's my seven and two infinity. So now tomorrow I get to wear the shirt because I've been saying Saving it to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys. Look Aww. how it comes, you guys. <laughs> look at this. Look how pretty. Look, look, y'all see that? Like, look at this. Like, so not only, so not only do you have this awesome shirt you're getting, but it comes so beautifully packaged. Now, when <laughs> I order shirts from like other o- online boutiques, they don't come like this. They no. come like like folded up in a bag and that's it. And they're a little wrinkled yeah. when you get them. But y'all, I mean, literally like, so if you like run a bit, like if you have a small business and you want to get your employees a little Christmas present, like you can get them all these shirts and you don't even have to wrap. You could just, yeah. I mean, it comes for you. It's got the size here. So if you're ordering a season small, you're ordering a specific size for people. Like how gorgeous is this? I mean, <laughs> such well, time is. taken into this guys. So that's now I get to wear it. Now I get to unwrap it. For <laughs> tomorrow, I've been saving it <laughs> to show you guys. Um, so should we do the drawing? Yeah. Now? And again, yeah. guys, I'm so sorry. We couldn't do this live. Please do not say anything negative in the comments about that. This is not anything I wanted to do. It just has to do with some limitations that we're dealing with right now on this platform. And so that's all it is. Now I have everybody's name. And I'm sorry it's taken a little longer than expected. I've had some family stuff going on. So. Yeah, no, it's no big deal. I mean, I'm sure everybody understands. So how we're doing how many names are we doing? I think we're to two, right? Two? Okay, so I'm gonna put this up here so you guys can't see. I can't see. I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and draw one. If my boyfriend wasn't so shy, I'd have him come in here and blindfold me and hold the bowl for me. But. <laughs> okay, so this is for Kathleen. As Scalera, I hope I'm saying that right. Kathleen Ascalera. I will put these names down in the description box too. And I'm going to send obviously them to Liz as well. So Kathleen, congratulations. You've won a shirt <laughs> from Liz. All and right. It can so, be any shirt of your shooting. Right. So and I'll it's get not we'll, a specific one. At this at this time, we'll I'll, after we're done, I'll get uh, I'll get you to say your email and contact, and I'll put that in the description box as well. All right. Let me circle it around so I can't see. <laughs> all right so marla kempen i hope i'm saying your name right marla kempen so marla marla and kathleen you Yay. both I, i'm assuming you're ladies you have one <laughs> shirt from liz all right so if you have so congratulations to our two female winners again i'm going to put your names down in the description box below so you're notified um and liz what is a good email for them to reach out to you so that they can contact you for their shirts um so it's my name so it's elizabeth Oliveira. you have it it's the one that you send my <laughs> the links to okay cool um yeah 
Now, um, should we have them put something specific in the subject line just so you see the emails, like t-shirt winner or? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. And if I get yeah. more than two emails. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to send, I'm going to send Elizabeth the names. Um, okay. Yes, please be honest, people. We are on the right side of history. So we want to maintain that. <laughs> so uh, Kathleen, it was Kathleen and Marla. Is that correct? Let me make sure. Yeah. So Marla Kemplin and Kathleen es Escalera. Send Elizabeth an email. Again, I'm going to put her email in the description box below and just say like t-shirt winner in the subject line. So she knows that it's you. Um, and then y'all will take it from there. So again, yeah. have a look at the website, two ladies, find the shirt that you like, and then let yeah. Elizabeth know. And y'all and spread the word too, because in the, in this time where we're transitioning into a new world, we really need to be supporting each other and, and moving away from from the type of uh, businesses that are maybe not, you know, in line with what we're in line with. And I can't say yeah. too much there, but you guys know yeah. what I'm talking about. And it's hard to right now. I understand like it's hard because they have really monopolized everything, but mm -hmm. um, here's a great way to support a fellow human being. Yeah. I can't say the yeah. P word because we have to be careful with that now because <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the world we live in. So, um, so yeah, please go check out her shop. And once again, they have toddler. I can't wait. I'm going to go look at the toddler stuff too for my, uh, for my I am working on more. So I, you know, I'll have some up, some more up soon. I've never, I like try to like wait till a certain date, but then I just get excited and put them out <laughs> whenever I am done with them. I totally understand. I hear you. I totally understand. And you are just so, so talented with all this. And I can't wait. I know so many of my subscribers have, I, I, I yes. hate calling you guys subscribers because that, that <laughs> sounds like arrogant. So many of the community members, our friends yeah. on this channel, you guys are all friends, have already gone in and purchased yes. shirt. So I so appreciate it. I, you know, and if anytime Bryce talks about it, like get, you know, a good amount of people coming from her channel that um, buy it. <laughs> super super awesome and it's very very nice and you know it helps support me and my family and you know I've recently become a stay-at-home mom um so that I can actually spend more time with my child <laughs> and you know focus on the important things in life so well um, this is awesome I mean I y'all she's so talented and and this is only the beginning for you Elizabeth I really believe like this is only the beginning you know, yeah. who knows what the future holds. I mean, the future is going to be bright, but mm -hmm. um, I see awesome things for you. Cause, cause regardless of, of you know, we're moving into a thousand years of peace, but we're still going to need some clothes. Right. <laughs> well, honestly, clothes. that's actually a dream that me and my husband, my, for those that you don't know, uh, my husband's from Mozambique and uh, his family is very much still, oh, you know, v village people um, like have, essentially nothing. Um, and we try to support them as much as possible, but in the, in his dad is a, um, tailor and makes clothes and has actually has made several outfits for me from like African fabric that I've kind of designed and he's been able to make. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing because he doesn't speak English. So I just draw it and he can make it. Um, so in the future, we've, uh, talked about possibly creating a clothing line that, um, his dad will essentially run over there that can support his family um, and kind of be because me and my husband both are very much creative and into fashion and everything. Um, so kind of incorporating the clothing styles over there and the fabrics from over there, um, you know, and, and selling it over there, but then also possibly selling it over here, too. So that's a very much a future that's dream awesome. of ours. So that is this awesome. is kind of a good I was about to say, starting. <laughs> if your father-in-law, if you ever want to put promote his stuff on my channel, you just let me know. We do that in um in our shala in our yoga school. We sell um yoga carpets and binding towels, which is like stuff you put on your mat for practice. Like yeah. you see, there's like corporate stuff you can see, like yogi toes, but the, the carpets we use are actual like pieces of carpet um mm -hmm. that we use to to collect sweat and stuff. And we actually order, we buy a bunch of carpets and binding towels from a family in India. And, oh, wow. um, and we sell, and we sell it at our shala. We don't sell through, you know, and, and the money we send goes directly to that family. You yeah. know, so it's, it's, it's great to know that you're actually, you know, like with big corporations, well, there's a, there's a thing that was going around around last Christmas, like last Christmas, like when you're, when you're 
buying from a small business, you're paying for a kid's dance lessons. Right. Exactly. So you're, <laughs> you're helping a family have a happy life. And, and these are, yeah. we need clothes. These are, this is stuff we need anyway. And so right. why not buy from somebody that, you know, here she is. She's our friend, Liz, you know, her, you see her beautiful baby. Like there's, yeah. this is where it's going. And she does I such a good job. Bedroom on the floor like, I know, there's, right? no, there's nothing pretentious about this <laughs> no yeah no. well I don't, actually my pseudo office i've set up and we're still kind of in the process of is in our bedroom too so <laughs> i got sweatpants on <laughs> i mean i don't know how y'all can see but i got my like little cotton shorts on <laughs> too so <laughs> nothing fancy here guys nothing That's fancy not here. All. so <laughs> all right let me do the stomp share here here we go all right. Well, I'm. I know, Liz. You've got a day, a busy day ahead of you. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I'm so excited for our winners, though. Congratulations, yeah. you guys! I can't wait. If uh, Kathleen and Marla, if you feel comfortable sharing a picture of yourself in these shirts once you get them, please send them to me, and I will put those pictures up on our community page. I can send them to Liz as well, uh, because because that is such an awesome way to promote Liz and to see your your beautiful faces in these mm -hmm. awesome awesome some awesome shirts so any last words liz do you want to say before we sign off no so i just uh thank you guys for all the support and bryce for doing this and i you know we should do more contests in the future i'm i mean i'm up for it sure <laughs> you just let well it's your store so you just let me know if you ever want to do another drawing let me know and we'll do it. We'll for sure do it again. I know the audience would love that. So, yeah. so we'll for sure do it again. Who doesn't like free stuff? I, mean, I know. Who doesn't like a competition too? Like, you know, yeah. so anyway. All right, guys. Well, um, so this is going to be released on Thursday and just a little heads up. I'm going to post something on the community board as well. Um, I was going to be releasing part one of our deep dive into voodoo on Friday, but that's going to be released next Friday. We've had a little bit of a hiccup with it's Mercury retrograde. There's been some technical difficulties. And so that will be starting next Friday, part one into our deep dive into voodoo. Um, and I know that's not how it's really said, which we're going to cover in part one. So for those who know that that's not, that's not, not really how that faith is said, we're going to cover that in part one. So anyway, all right, guys, well, I hope that you have a fantastic day. I know Liz hopes you have a fantastic day as well. And yes. we'll, we'll ha hold the line guys. The best is yet to come. Like we're on the yeah. precipice and just smile. And it's all pantomime. It's all pantomime. Yes. <laughs> You are Alice in Wonderland. Oh, there you <laughs> so, go. Exactly. Look through the veil. <laughs> exactly. And guys, I am going to be on Charlie Ward's show next Tuesday. And I plan, I was telling Liz, I plan on wearing my pantomime shirt yes, on his it. show because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this quote. So, so, all right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.